Hi everyone, welcome to my first video for uh, Petrichor Soap Company. Um, today I'm making my oat milk and lavender soap. Uh, I had first intended to do this video as uh, me talking to you while I was making it live. Uh, so you will see some awkward moments where I'm sort of pausing or uh, waiting while I'm explaining something in real time. So I decided because I am kind of soft-spoken and uh, easily uh, go quiet when I'm concentrating that doing it in real time isn't quite the best uh, idea for me. So going forward, I am going to do these voiceovers because I still did want to be able to chat with you guys. Um, I enjoy the YouTube channels where people chat and kind of get to know each other. Uh, so that was important to me to bring to this channel. So we're going to try with the voiceovers and uh, if that's too awkward or doesn't work out, um, you know, we'll try something else. So uh, this is my new uh, soap recipe, which features oat milk as the star and uh, I'm a really big fan of oat milk and oat products in body care just because I do suffer from eczema and um, uh, I find it benefits me now I can't make any promises with soap that it'll do anything but get you clean but uh, if you like having oat products in your soaps and lotions and body care then uh, you know hopefully someday you'll you'll check us out so I've split up the batch here and I'm adding some eggplant mica from Windy Point into the smaller pitcher. Uh, my lavender soap is a mix of a white base with this sort of uh, dark gray purple uh, swirl in it. Sorry while I take a sip of tea. Um, some people from Windy Point left reviews that they didn't really like this purple mica. I am a fan of it because I wanted a sort of grayish looking purple. Um, if you want a more vibrant, deep purple, it's really not going to be the one that you pick because it does fade to more of a gray. Um, you might see that in the finished product. So I've added some titanium dioxide into the larger batch. I use uh, the water dispersible TD from Windy Point as well. Um, I get a lot of my supplies from Windy Point uh, down in Calgary. It's not sponsored by them and <laughs> I just, they're in Alberta as well and uh, I like to support them when I can. So with this batch, um, you're going to see soon that it, it starts to accelerate me on me pretty quickly, which usually isn't an issue when you're working with lavender fragrance or lavender essential oil. Um, I had quite a few things working against me, uh, one of them being the temperature. It was incredibly hot. Uh, I want to say it was probably like 36 degrees Celsius that day, um, which is really uncommon for this time of year where we are. Um, I am in Leduc, Alberta, Canada, which is, you know, we, we don't really get into the 30s in the beginning of September. Uh, the fragrance are, that I'm using is a blend of lavender fragrance from Windy Point and Bulgarian uh, lavender essential oil from New Directions. And uh, wasn't really a fan of the uh, Bulgarian lavender on its own. It's kind of got a funk to it that's different from like, like lavender 4042. Um, but mixed with this fragrance oil, I actually really enjoy it, which makes me happy because I bought a huge bottle of the Bulgarian lavender and I, I thought that, you know, it was going to go to waste that I wasn't going to be able to use it in anything. But I'm really happy with how this blend worked out. Um, so not only is it super hot, uh, my uh, my um, 
lye solution was a, a little bit warm, I think, for soaping, especially given the temperature. Um, and TD always tends to get things to move quickly, and sometimes dark micas, I find anything black or with uh, black oxide in it can go quick as well. But um, I do end up getting it in the mold. There isn't the pretty uh, lacy kind of drop swirl that I usually try to go for in my lavender soap. Um, but you'll see in a bit. I'm going to beat it to death with the chopstick and um, kind of make it look <laughs> a little bit a little bit better at least I think so um, so forgive me if my voice gets a little crackly um, I work from home and I really do not talk to a lot of people at all during the day other than sometimes my cats um, and my wife when she gets home but other than that I am alone for most of the day and I really don't do a lot of talking so uh, doing these voiceovers is a little bit of a challenge for me. I do, I do have my tea here. Um, but anyway, I think it's good because uh, it's it's not bad for me to um, to talk to people once in a while. <laughs> I don't know if any of you also work from home and and find the same thing that uh, your social skills start to uh, suffer. Um, I actually started working from home just before the pandemic in, in 2019. Um, I went home in May, so I was a trendsetter. I was uh, already all set up by the time the rest of my company got sent home. Um, so that was one good thing to come out of it, I guess. Uh, so you can see it's getting pretty thick here. Just. Uh, looping it in. I definitely do not like to work with it when it's this thick. Um, but it's still workable. It's definitely not soap on a stick. It's just thicker than I'd like it to be. Um, and the oat milk uh, it contributes to it accelerating because there is, is sugars in the oats uh, that react with the lye. Um, and uh, also, I, I do work with a water discount, which I'm going to um, lessen that a bit going forward just to see if we can help this acceleration issue. Because they did have it um, move quicker on me. Not quite this quick, but still quicker than I'd like. So there I am just using the chopstick. Just me and the chopstick. It's one of my <laughs> go-to tools for swirling. I don't really have a lot of fancy... Um, soap equipment other than my molds. So I, I got those in specially because I was committed to having this bar shape when I opened my business and I wanted um, to get these molds in from, from Nurture Soap and I shipped them up from the States which was incredibly expensive but I think it's worth it and hopefully I will have them for uh, a very very long time. I started off with just the two little guys that you see there, um, and more recently I ordered the two uh, large ones, which is pretty exciting. So scraping out what I can from the the bin um, and trying to fill in some of the corners that are a little bit uh, empty just from it uh, being a, not spreading out as nicely. I do like to texture my soap top, so I, I don't mind it when it's this consistency once it's in the mold. Um, it's actually it's actually better than it being uh, too runny. So here you go. I'm just using my favorite classic spoon zigzag spoon technique to um, texture the tops of the loaves. This is of all the soap making. Uh, steps. This is my favorite. Uh, I think a lot of people really enjoy texturing the top of soap. It's just very, very gratifying. And uh, yeah, at least I didn't have to let them sit for a while to set up before I could go ahead and texture them. I made quite a mess, so I am going to 
and clean up the edges with some paper towel. So I have been making soap since 2018. Um, I started my business in uh, 2020. Later in 2020, though, I know a lot of people uh, kind of in the same boat opening businesses during the pandemic. Um, this is still to support my hobby. Uh, basically, I, I got to the point where I had so much soap stored up and I had overloaded my friends and family with soap that um, the only way I could keep making is if I could move some of what I had on hand so uh, everyone said you know gave feedback that they they liked what I was making so I decided to go ahead and uh, try my hand at selling soap to the public and just have slowly been growing since then. Um, you know, I am sort of a hobby level business, uh, but I am doing more and more orders and, and trying to work more, mo more sorry, uh, wholesale orders in as well. Wholesale is really uh, my favorite, I think. Um, I worked retail for a lot of years, so, I am not super keen on uh, going to markets and such to sell for myself. Um, I'm just kind of awkward in public and especially even even more so now. But uh, I still do enjoy sometimes getting out, uh, meeting people, having them uh, experience my soaps and getting that feedback in real time. That is uh, always really gratifying. So uh, I'm putting in some lavender buds here. Uh, this is from uh, Bilston Farms on Vancouver Island and this lavender just smelled exquisite when you opened the bag. Uh, and it's so pretty. Um, a lot of purple color is still left in the blossoms which I don't often see with lavender buds. <clears throat> um, some of that color fades or, or tends to go brown once you put it on top of soap. Um, I find that if you wait until your soap is kind of this thickness and then put the buds on that the uh, they don't brown quite as much, but it's still sort of to be expected uh, from lavender. But I like to put a little bit on there because I, I like the look of botanicals on my soap. A little bit more rustic, a little bit more natural. I'm just trying to poke them into the soap just a little bit so they don't all <laughs> fall off when I go to unmold them and cut them because you know, that's a waste too. So as I mentioned, we do live in Canada, and uh, I wanted to start a channel to sort of reach out to you know, both other soap makers in, in Canada and, and customers as well. Um, there are some of us out there on YouTube, but uh, not, not, not a whole lot, and I think we could always use more uh, representation. So uh, here I am uh, a couple days later. Uh, cutting and as you can see I'm still pretty happy with the swirl despite it not being the drop delicate swirl that I was hoping for still turned out really nice and and you know what that's one of my philosophies with soap that it's it's beautiful no matter what happens and it's still always usable except in the um, rare circumstances that you've got a problem with too much lye or uh, other other issues that have, make you have to rebatch the soap, but um, for the most part, a lot of it's just aesthetic, and you still end up with some pretty beautiful bars of soap. You'll see my cat there in the background, Thunder. Um, he's an adorable old man. We have two cats, Thunder and Lulu. Thunder gets his name because he's an extremely loud cat. Uh, and I don't know if he's part Siamese or what his issue is, but he's very vocal, 
always has to tell you a story, especially if he's upset and um, he can be quite emo. And uh, Lulu is named after Cthulhu, the elder god, which because when we got her, her favorite toy was an octopus. So here we go, the uh, final shot of oat milk and lavender. I thank you for joining me today and listening to me ramble. And we'll see you again in the next video. Take care.